Pierre Auguste Renoir, The Life and Artworks of a Great Impressionist Artist. The French painter Pierre Auguste Renoir was one of the central figures of the Impressionist movement. His work is characterized by an extraordinary richness of feeling, a warmth of response to the world and to the people in it. As a celebrator of beauty and especially feminine sensuality, it has been said that Renoir is the final representative of a tradition which runs directly from Rubens to Watteau. Pierre-Auguste Renoir is one of the giants in the firmament of French artists, and indeed one of the greatest artists the world has ever seen, owing to the new techniques that he ushered in. Throughout his life, he experimented with new styles in order to get to the very pinnacle of artistic refinement, and it is not really a surprise that he is regarded as a giant by painters across generations. Renoir's paintings are housed at some of the most famous museums in the world, and private collectors pay tens of millions of dollars to get hold of his most famous works in order to add to their collection. Renoir, like many other artists, lived a pretty interesting life as well. Pierre-Auguste Renoir was born on February 25, 1841, into a working-class family in Limoges, a city in the central west region of France. The area is historically significant as the center of French porcelain production, reaching that status during the 19th century. Fittingly, Renoir's first artistic job during his teens was as a painter in one of the town's porcelain factories. The son of a tailor and a seamstress, Renoir had a steady hand and a talent for decorative effect, which earned him praise from his employers and brought him to the attention of a growing customer base including a number of wealthy patrons for whom he painted picture hangings and decorations for fans and other luxury objects. These early successes fed his desire to leave the factory and pursue fine arts painting. To compensate for the limited training he was receiving in Limoges, in 1860, Renoir began making frequent trips to visit the Louvre in Paris to study the work of the French Rococo masters Jean-Antoine Watteau, Jean-Honoré Fragonard, and François Boucher, and the Romantic painter Eugène Delacroix. Though Delacroix and the Rococo painters worked nearly a century apart, Renoir recognized similarities in their soft, loose handling of paint, which showed individual brush strokes, and their embrace of color and movement, rather than the classical clarity of carefully composed form. In 1862, Renoir began his formal training under Charles Glair, a Swiss-born academic painter who instructed a number of talented painters, among them Claude Monet, Alfred Sisley, and Frédéric Bazille, three of Renoir's future Impressionist colleagues, with whom he became close friends upon entering Glare's Paris studio. During their training, Renoir and his new friends would venture into the scenic forest of Fontainebleau to engage in plein air painting. However, unlike Monet and Sisley, Renoir always maintained a penchant for the studio and for painting more traditional portraiture in the style of the 18th century French masters he so admired. Fontainebleau became a favorite painting spot of Renoir's 
and one he visited frequently, thanks in part to his friend Jules Lecoeur, an admirer of his art, who owned a house in Buron Marlotte, a commune on the forest's southern border. In 1865, Lecoeur introduced Renoir to the 17-year-old Lise Trehaut, who became Renoir's lover and favorite model for several years. Trehaut sat for dozens of portraits, including two in 1867, Diana the Huntress, which portrayed her as a Greek goddess a la Rococo portraits, and Lise with a parasol, which was received favorably at the French Salon of 1868. Well aware of the Salon's strict standards, Renoir executed these portraits in a conventional compositional style, combining smooth lines and meticulous coloration with a matter-of-fact naturalism reminiscent of the realist painter Gustave Courbet, whom he admired. During the summer of 1869, Renoir and Monet spent two months painting at La Grenière, a lakeside boating resort for the French middle class, located just outside of Paris. Indeed, the case can be made that Renoir and Monet sowed the seeds of Impressionism at La Grenière, it was here that both men began to use broad brush strokes to capture momentary scenes with a sketch-like looseness of feel, deftly capturing the water's natural movement and reflective effect on light. Immediately following the brief but tumultuous Franco-Prussian War in which Renoir fought, and the occupation of the French Commune in 1871, Renoir's early success began to take a turn for the worse. Rejections from the Salon far outnumbered acceptances, due in no small part to the unfinished quality his newer work assumed. His fortunes reached a point where Renoir was faced with the choice of either paying models or buying paint. While others of his colleagues, like Claude Monet and Camille Pissarro, had ceased to do so, Renoir continued submitting work to the Salon up until 1873, holding on to the belief that acceptance was a necessary yardstick for success. In addition, his friendship with the Lacour family soured in 1874, leaving Renoir without that source of patronage and the ability to stay in their home near Fontainebleau. Following the 1873 Salon, in which the Impressionists' canvases were largely panned, Renoir and his cohorts began planning an independent exhibition of their works, free from the aesthetic constraints of the Salon and its jury system. The first Impressionist group show was held on April 15, 1874. While Renoir sold few works as a result of the show, it brought him to the attention of the collector Victor Choquet, whose portrait he would paint, and who would become something of a financial savior during this period. By the time of the fourth Impressionist exhibition in 1878, Renoir quietly abstained. He had discovered financial independence, thanks to regular portrait commissions, and had become disenchanted with the ideology of spontaneity that he felt had consumed the group. Shortly after disassociating himself from the very group of artists he helped found, Renoir traveled to Italy for the first time, a trip enabled by a financial deal he had struck with the dealer Paul Torrent Ruel. 
During this sojourn, he came of the opinion that Impressionism lacked the structural underpinnings that had produced a great art of the Renaissance masters like Raphael. As he wrote to the dealer, Ambrose Vollard, later in his life, by the early 1880s, he felt that he had reached the end of Impressionism and could neither paint nor draw. This pilgrimage, then, was a motivation for Renoir to move away from the loose, incidental quality of Impressionism toward more classical ideas of draftsmanship, composition, and modeling. This shift had, to an extent, already begun. Renoir produced the iconic Luncheon of the Boating Party between 1880 and 1881, immediately before leaving France, and it shows an adjustment of his painterly techniques toward greater compositional unity. The focus of his mature work would no longer be exclusively on pioneering new modes of expressing the movement and color of light and nature. Rather, he looked to the coloration of the Rococo and late Renaissance periods, tendencies that were supported by further trips to Italy, Spain, and England. As the turn of the century now approached, married and with three sons, Renoir continued to produce work at an impressive rate, despite his continually failing health. An injury to his right arm from a bicycle accident had left him with severe arthritis and rheumatism plagued his left eye. By 1910, he was mostly relegated to a wheelchair and with bandages around his hands, making painting a great challenge. The family purchased a home in Cannes-sur-Mer in the south of France, which gave Renoir periodic relief from his pains with its dry and mild climate. In the previous decade, Renoir had befriended the art dealer Vollard, who became both an important patron and a trusted advisor to the artist when it came to choosing subject matter. In 1913, Vollard, well aware of Renoir's physical limitations, made the bold suggestion that he attempt sculpture, introducing him to the Catalan-born sculptor Richard Guinot. Despite his physical ailments, Renoir was able to complete several successful sculptures during his collaboration with Guino, who largely worked with clay. Influenced by his earlier trips to Spain to see the works of Francisco Goya, Renoir infused his late paintings with an increasingly monumental style. While his fellow impressionists, Claude Monet, and Edgar Degas pursued the effects of light nearly to the brink of abstraction later in their careers, Renoir gained a solid, almost sculptural quality in the figures and landscapes he painted during the twilight of his career. In the winter of 1919, Renoir suffered a heart attack at his home in cagnes sur mer Shortly after, he passed away on December 3rd, 1919, with his sons by his side and several of his works hanging in the Louvre among the French masters he once went there to study. It could be argued that Renoir and his colleague Monet are to Impressionism as Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque are to Cubism. Their experiments in painting together created an entirely modern visual idiom and marked off the artistic territory that the movement would grow to inhabit in the following decades. Ultimately, his combination of modernity and tradition was highly influential on a next generation of artists, including Pierre Bonnard, Pablo Picasso, 
Henri Matisse, and Maurice Denis, all of whom collected his work. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. Please give us a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. We are super excited about you watching our videos and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following videos.